Rabbi Alicia Harris, and I am the rabbi at Congregation Shir Tikva in Troy. Um, one of my favorite memories is Shabbat at my grandparents' house. My Bubby and Zadie were like wonderful hosts and we would drive from Toledo every, uh, every like once a month or so to see them in Chicago and we would get there right before Shabbos and the door would open, it would smell wonderful and they would envelop us in hugs and then we would have this wonderful meal um, and my Zadie did a very special version of the uh, Kiddush, which we now do at Shir Tikva, which like brings my heart so much joy. Um, I actually wanted to become a cantor. That was really where I started. Um, as a kid, when I was studying for my bat mitzvah, I was obsessed with it. I could not put it down. I was always the kid in my family. I was like, we should go to synagogue. And my parents were like, mm, we've already gone twice this week. Maybe that's enough. Um, but I had some really fantastic mentors who were um, cantors at my synagogue growing up in Toledo. And um, I just feel so lucky that they got me on this path. And Things change, of course, and here we are. <laughs> being with people. I love being with people, being with them in their joyous moments and in their hardest moments. Um, it's such a privilege and an honor um, to bring meaning and Judaism to people's lives in those moments. Well, I think uh, in general, like in my home, we um, did a lot of singing and joyousness around Shabbat, uh, which is one of my favorite things to do. I love leading services now, and especially when we get to have services outside, it's the best. Um, but Shabbat, one of my favorite Shabbat things is just the, the slowing of the pace and going to shul on Shabbos with my Zadie was really wonderful to me. Um, I've got a lot of Shabbat traditions and depending on what stage I was in my life, right? What I was up to, but like, I loved Shabbat at Hillel in Pittsburgh with my friends. I loved my early 20s Shabbats. I loved Shabbat in Jerusalem when I was living there and Shabbat in Argentina when I was living there. So every week, every phase is a little different, but there's so many good Shabbat traditions. The first thing that jumps to mind is um, Matovu. Um, there's a line in there, Va'anita fila ti lecha, I am my prayer to you. Um, and that is the way that we live our lives and the way that we you know, engage with the divine and the way that we acknowledge the divinity within each of us is part of the thing that speaks to me so deeply and the way that we can live our lives in this meaningful capacity to experience joy and experience pleasure and to have you know full lives is a way that we can serve god and that's like i need to feel but i need to feel i am my prayer to you I think it's got to be Pesach, um, which I'm sure is an answer you're getting a lot. I love Yom Kippur. I love the like the quietness of it. But Pesach, um, when I was about 12, my Zadie, we, I have my my Zadie had eight brothers and sisters, and yeah, my dad has 44 first cousins. Like we've got a lot of people, um, and there was one uh, Pesach where my Zadie was like trying to lead the service, the seder, and, and nobody was listening, and everybody was talking over him, and he was like, "I'm done. This is my last year," and I was like, "I will do it." And uh, since I was about 12 years old, that's, uh, that's been, and that's like part of the joy of it for me. And I also like, I love the, the little nuances about why the rabbis were doing what they were doing and what they were up to and learning about, like learning about it in, in us at HUC was awesome. Like I love Passover. It's so interesting. I think, uh, like a roasted chicken potato Shabbat is like the classic. Um, I also really love, you know, brisket, obviously. And um, I'm, I, you know, Haroset will always have a special place in my heart. Um, 
So there's a lot of foods that I can't eat now that I used to be able to eat, but like, you know, this is like because of food allergies, you know, um, but, but uh, yeah, I think the classic, the smell of the roasting chicken is really like, that is the thing that feels like home to me. So I think it's engaging in the words that our ancestors also engaged with. It's acknowledgement of um, our relationship to God and the ways in which we choose uh, to uh, develop that relationship on our own and, and it also means community, it means family. Judaism is so special in that so many people have read these same words and have asked the big questions. And I think that's the other big thing for us is like, I have a lot of very dear friends who are practicing Christians and they don't, they aren't raised with the same kind of question asking mentality that we are raised with. They just aren't. Um, and so it is a joy to watch people who come to our, find our tradition maybe a little later in life or who realize like, oh, this is mine to struggle with and this is mine to disagree with and this is mine to agree with and this is my joy and my pain and the collective memory of our people. Like that is what it means to be Jewish, I think, to ask those big questions and to continue to ask them in different phases of our lives, for sure. Yes, uh, my advice is, Make sure you really want to do it, first of all. Like, no, for sure. Um, work a couple of years at a synagogue after college. Like, make sure that you want to be embedded in the Jewish community because it's a long process. Um, the other thing is develop a sense of your spiritual life or what you think your spiritual life might look like before you go to school. Because school can be, graduate, I mean, it's graduate school, right? Like it's hard. And um, it, you know, there's a lot of good resources and a ton of mentors, but like the more that you can develop yourself before you go, even though you change so dramatically while you're at school, like it is, it's really good to have some foundation there. Um, and the other thing is like reach out to as many rabbis as you can find, because all of us are so excited to help. Um, any questions, any projects, any, like anybody who went to your school years before will help you and give you whatever resources you need. So it's that, those are the things that I also like, make sure to take time for yourself in school is the other big thing, right? Make sure to take time. And I would say that to anybody going into any kind of graduate program, like make sure to carve out a life because it is a hard thing to do, but it is crucial to maintaining who you are. I am a, an avid Latin dancer. I dance salsa, bachata, merengue. I, I'm obsessed with Cuba and Cuban music. And I love dancing. I dance uh, Casino and Casino de Rueda, which is a specific kind of salsa dance that happens um, in a circle. It's, I love dancing. <laughs> So I started in July of 2020, our day in May of 2020, right? It's been a very weird two years that I've had this job, uh, not normal at all. And I kind of still some days feel like an outsider. And one of the things that I can't, ex like cannot express enough is how warm this year Tika community has been. They are kind to me and kind to each other. And that was one of the big things that I was looking for when I was looking for a job was like, how do people at this congregation treat one another? And they just take such detailed and, and like careful care of one another. And I'm so grateful for that. The other thing is that like in this very bizarre time, you know, we're all doing our best to find meaning in this moment. Right. And I just, um, if you are finding a way to connect with the Jewish community, awesome. If you found yourself falling away from it and you want to come back, do it, you know, like listen to that inner voice. And the other thing I think I want to say is that this job is so holy and sacred to me. It is a privilege every day. And 
it is a calling. And also some days it feels like a job, right? <laughs> and some days it feels like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And I just, I cannot tell you how grateful I am for my community and to what an incredible place to land for my first job out of school. Like this year, Tikva, my, my team is unbelievable. My board is so functional and wonderful. And I just, uh, we've got a lot of fun stuff going on. So I'm just feeling super grateful for, for Sheer Tikva. And um, I hope people will come check us out. We have a good time. <laughs> <laughs>